Welcome to the Protagonist Pub. My name is Tammy, and this is where characters gather. It is book club review time. This month, as you know, I chose the book for book club, and y'all kindly helped me pick the book. And initially, um, I ended up going with A Game of Kings by Dorothy Dunnett, which I didn't bring upstairs. Um, and I chose that for book club, despite something else winning the poll. Based on the reaction to a match in the making the month before, I will link that video in the description down below. And I thought it would be a little more up their speed. Um, I DNF the book very shortly after last month's book club. And I told them, I said, I'm DNFing it. I'm reading this instead. Feel free to join me. So, and the book that won your poll, it was The Broken Hearts Bakery by Carlo Lorano. Um, I have read it. As you know, if you follow me on Instagram, um, book club, 75% of book club members up and canceled on me um, a week before book club, which is fine. But, you know, their choice, not, my, not a big deal. Um, but I'm still going to give a review for the book. I have read it. I have talked about it several times. I will link those videos in the description down below. Um, but today I'm just going to talk about the book itself. So it is the first book in the Haven Ridge series. I did read the prequel novella for Spring into Christian Fiction hosted by Katie over at Paperbacks and Ponytails. I will link the video, the weekly video where I talk about the novella, which was the Brick House Cafe. I really enjoyed the Brick House Cafe. It was a great entry into the series, and it was incredibly interesting. So, The Broken Hearts Bakery is the first book. I still love this cover immensely. If you have been to this part of Colorado where the book is set, you will understand that it's truly that beautiful. So, in this story, we follow Gemma, who is a family law attorney in L.A., who is told by her partners at the law firm that they're reneging on her deal when she went to work for the firm, and she needs to take a week off to decide if she's going to capitulate to their demands or not. At the same time, her best friend in Haven Ridge calls with her own crisis and says, look, if, if it's at all possible, could you please come and babysit Taylor because I need to go to New York. Gemma, of course, agrees for a variety of reasons and goes to Haven Ridge. The town she has spent her adult life trying to avoid. And she's positive when she arrives that she can continue to avoid the town for the week she's there. She'll just stay in the house. She'll, you know, keep an eye on her teenage niece and escape unscathed. As you can imagine, it doesn't go to plan. And she not only ends up reconnecting with the town, but with her high school sweetheart, whom she is very conflicted about. And I, I will leave it at that. So that's the premise of the book. I didn't give away spoilers. Um, this is not Christian fiction. This is secular fiction. I will call it faith adjacent, but it is not, there is no faith content 
it is there's not even you know gentle everyday faith it's 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 truly a secular book um this is not my first carlo lorano i i truly loved um Oath of the Brotherhood, which is on the shelf up above me. And the other two books in that series are up there waiting for me to read them. And however, I am purely on the middle of the road, much like the book. It's not a bad book. It's very well written. It makes some very salient and needed point about relationships but it makes those points straddling the fence trying to appeal to the contemporary secular romance audience while keeping a foot in the religious romance audience camp with the intent of the messaging and thus it lets both sides of the fence down so for the secular side of the fence there's nowhere near the amount of spice they would you know you would find a typical secular romance book it has a message that you don't find in contemporary secular romance be it young adult new adult, adult, you, you just don't find the messaging in it. And that message will, in my opinion, fall on deaf ears to the romance audience that wants spice of any level in their book. They won't find it. The religious romance camp will be let down by not just the lack of faith content, but the lack of a clear viewpoint for the protagonist. So uh, that, that's one problem. So my next problem with the book is that Gemma, our main character, is 30, 30 something. And she is one of those broken characters that refuses to let go of the past. And I find this, so she's a family law attorney in LA and her part of the deal with her firm is that she brings in lots of clients. She's a rainmaker, but she can choose clients to do for free because they meet the criteria in her head of someone that needs her help. And this all stems from her parents' divorce in which her mother had a bad attorney and she's never let go of that hurt. So when her parents got divorced, she was in her late teens and she felt the town shunned her and took her father's side and her mother, you know, the town basically forced her and her mother out. Not enough was explained about her parents' divorce to make that believable. And in my opinion, and in my life experience, what happens between your parents is your parents' drama, especially since she was 16, 17 while this happened. And 
it, you know, she's 30 something, you know, basically she's, you know, lived half her life with her parents divorced and she still hasn't let go of that trauma and anger and guilt. And I just find that, that trope of the perpetually hurt female antagonist that just festers in that pool of anxiety and doubt. Just so annoying. At some point, you need to decide, ladies, that you have value and you have worth and you need to grow up and deal with the real world. And the real world doesn't care about your past trauma because life is hard and it's hard for everybody. So I, I don't like that trope. I just, I, it is so irritating to me. That being said, I did finish the entire book. I didn't hate the book. I just didn't love the book. Um, and I don't know to whom I would recommend the book. That's my other problem. Um, it's, it's completely clean. There are no, you know, bedroom, closed door, or otherwise scenes. There's no uh, swearing. There's, there's none of that, which will appeal to the religious romance fans. It won't appeal to the secular romance fans. And the secular romance fans will, you know, to whom do I recommend this book? I can't answer that question. So the second book is the bookshop on Beacon Street, which I'll put a picture right here. It releases in, I want to say September. I'm still interested in reading it. I'm just not as enthused about reading it, if that makes sense. Um, I'm just going to give this book a middle of the road rating. There's nothing, there's nothing stellar about it. There's nothing horrible about it. It just is. I will, I will give Carlo, Carla Pra um, kudos. This is a self-published book. I didn't realize this, but these are self-published. She has her own publishing house and, and kudos to her for that, for, you know, getting her work out there. I have nothing but respect for self-published authors. And I don't regret reading the book. I'm just let down by the book. So that is the July 2023 book club review. And I know what we're reading for August. I will give you a sneak peek. It is West with Giraffes by Linda Rutledge and Michelle picked this. So I will let you know next month. Thank you for stopping by today. Please leave a comment down below, like, and subscribe, and I will see you here next time at the Protagonist Pub.